Welcome back to another basic Game Maker Studio tutorial and this time we're going to do some data structure and just to signify what actually data structure is, what it is basically good for. As you can see I'm collecting those red apples and then once I go out of the room and re-enter it, all those red apples are there. But maybe sometimes you want to have some unique pickups, I don't know, like a collectible, a power up or something which you can just pick up and then it's gone. because. This is how Game Maker Studio works. Every time a level is being created, all the stuff is being created and new. But then, well, these collectibles wouldn't work. As for example, as you can see, I uh, well, quit and enter and bam, they are gone. So how you, can you do that? Well, with arrays, which is one of the easiest data structures. So if you want to know that, stay tuned. This is one up indie. I am the developer of the indie game Clunky Souls and a programmer slash pixel artist. So if you're new here and you want more, consider subscribing to my channel because I upload every day a video. So let's get right into the good stuff. So the setup is pretty pretty simple. I have my red apples and my golden apples and the golden apples are the ones which are of interest to me. And here we have a controller which is the, well, the more um, important part and in that controller we store some stuff which is very very important for example and therefore for example it needs to be persistent so it's in every room and it doesn't change and being reloaded every time again and here what it's just of interest to you are those arrays but if you haven't seen arrays well what are arrays so let's get that stuff gone basically an array is like a regular variable but for example, if you have a regular variable, you just assign it to a value, like let's say zero or a text or whatever, and then, well, you can just store one thing and that is it. But the array is a little bit different, but it looks kind of the same. It just has a variable name and then it has those brackets. Then it says index, which is kind of a position in this data structure, and then it assigns a value. So this guy here. So basically, if you're having, uh, let's say, your golden apples, you have an array with, I don't know, unlimited positions, if you like, or the ones you actually need. And then we just say, all right, on this position, we already collected a golden apple. Here we didn't, here we didn't, here we didn't, here we didn't, here we did collect the one, and so on. So how can you signify it? Basically, you just say golden apple, and then you see in the red, number this is zero so this is our zero position this is the one position and so on this is basically just slots in a data well structure and this data structure has just different kind of slots and you can fill them if you like but of course you have to initialize them so basically once you created them they need to have a number or something so basically they need to be created once and then you set it to whatever you like and here you can signify it by some number. So basically you can say, okay, this is one, this is zero, and zero just means it's empty, and one means it's there. But of course you can do it with text or whatever. This should be actually just binary, so it's easier to distinguish. So basically one is a golden apple and zero is not. So basically everything is at start at zero, and at some point it fills up with one. So this is an array, a variable name, brackets, then your index position, which is one of those guys here, and then the value you want to assign it to. This is basically the same. So we have our little controller over here, and then I just created, I don't know, three positions. I don't know, you can do four or whatever. I don't know, we can have something like this. No problem. This is free for you, but this is, of course, then you use a little bit more of memory. So. How does that work? Well, basically we have our little golden apples now and then what happens? Basically, once this hyperactive girl tramples over those apples or she just collects them, but use your imagination what you want to know, then we go to our controller and dot and say, well, we want to access an array at a specific point, which I call index. And for example, once you well, start, initializing your golden apple here then you just say all right i want to have it at zero because this is i don't know a default position and for example once she just runs over that takes the index position and sets it 
to one. That means that it's collected. And this is how it works in theory. But for example, I just did a little thing here so you understand how data structures work a little bit deeper. So first of all, the first one is collected and the second one, uh, the first one is not collected and the second one is collected. So how can we well assign this index position? We can just go into our room, say creation code and take this index and set this one to zero. So this one would be the first, which is not collected. And this one, creation code, set it to one that it is collected. But for example, once we start the game, both are there. And the question is, why are both there? For example, I collect them, bam, bam. I go out and then I go back in. Both are gone, so both are definitely collected and they are gone. But so why is, for example, this approach not working? Because here I set it to one and then, for example, every time I create, basically the, the level is being loaded, I say, all right, check our index position. Is it set to one? Then destroy it. And this should actually work. But in, here comes the crux. Um, every time you load this level, the creation code has been created once. And then it says, ah, okay, we have an index position of zero. Let's go here, index position, blah, blah, blah. And this is when we go in here, always referring to the first point. How can we circumvent it? Well, quite easy. We just kill that code because we don't need it. We do, we do a little alarm, set it to, let's say, two steps. And once, well, we do that in the creation code. After two steps, the alarm has been triggered once. And then we do the same code. We just say, all right, let's check our index position which is now a different number and then if it's already been collected destroy it for example let's run our game fast again come on come on come on come on we just do and as you can see the second apple is magically gone because it already checked in the advance and said all right at that index position we are already collected and this is it so basically this was a race hopefully that was not too difficult and you now understand how arrays work. There are different data structures, but this is one of the easiest ones. And therefore, if you don't have too many objects, this is quite a good system to use. And for example, well, once you kill your game and you start it, of course, everything's being resetted. For that, you need a save system and a load system, which is just allowing to save the progress when the game is being completely, well, off and being loaded completely new again but that is a different topic hopefully that was of interest to you and you learned something have a good one one up indie